Hey fellas, uh, what I'm going to do today is just blab around a little bit about the uh, GT40 Explorer lowers and uppers. Um, I'm kind of getting into the swing of messing with these and they're kind of fun to see what they do for factory stuff. This is a stock as, as on yet unmolested lower. What I wanted to point out was you see how tiny the ports are where they go to the head. This at this point right here where it goes to the head is 1.4 inches in diameter. The head inlet is about 1.6 between 1.6 1.65. So as you can see, opening that up would help a lot as far as making power. And because you still got the long runner length in the in the upper, you're not going to lose you know like any uh, low RPM torque that people worry about. It's very helpful to get that opened up. Uh, T Moss does a great job on that. He's the guy to talk to. You can get a hold of him on the corral. Uh, he does a really good job on these. So actually, his son ports them now, but T Moss still checks them out before they go in the back of the box. <clears throat> this is the intake here I had on my my red car poodle pecker. The lowers where it goes to the head, and actually the whole. The whole runner length on a factory one is like 1.6 inches in diameter from where it goes into the inlet or the upper inlet up here. It's a rounded uh, rectangular oval t shape. And that's like I said 1.6 and then it stays that diameter all the way through. It gets into the lower. It's 1.6, 1 1.65 in that area. Like I said, the total inlet path. Ford did a really good job of keeping all that, you know, roughly the same size except for where it comes out to the head. So you got 14 inches of total runner length, 1.6, 1.65 diameter. And on this one, I opened up the the runners to the head to try to better match the port, but I didn't do anything with the inlet here at the at the upper lower split. I just did open this one up a little bit because when I first had this open. I cut my primary concern was to cut two inches out of the runner length. Uh, that showed on my computer program. It really helped a lot, but it did cause cost some uh, mid-range torque. But I thought having more power in the upper RPMs, I could carry it better. But it kind of didn't work out that way. So this uh, this upper is going to go back on the car. Well, actually, all three of them are going to be on the car at some point again for our dyno day, which we're going to do on the 3rd of November. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to try all three uppers. I'll have the stock stock one over here with 80 millimeter throttle body, 14 inches of runner length. And then I'll put this one on, which has been opened up, but has a shorter runner length. This one is 12 inches total, you know, for the upper and lower. And then this one will be opened up considerably inside, fully port the whole inside, keep the stock runner length. So uh, that one should make the most power and still keep the most mid-range torque I, according to the uh, uh, computer program I have. And this one also because it's got a shorter runner length I'm gonna try to scare up a one inch spacer and try that also. So all three will be back on the car at some point you know at the track I can swap uppers in just a few minutes at the track and on the dyno so I'll have back to back to back comparisons. Uh, this is the latest lower I did. This one I opened up uh, the inlet to the ports. These ported GT40s I have in the car is like 1.72. So I'm doing the whole port on the lower. Did the whole port on the lower 1.72. And then this lower here, or upper, I'm sorry, is going to be 1.72 from where they come into the port and then where it out it transitions out to the uh, from the upper to the lower. And also, what I forgot to show on the last one, this is the back side of the plenum. When the air comes in through the crossover, it splatters up against this flat wall. There's nothing back there to turn the air either way. So what I'm going to do is put a some kind of a divider in there, just either like a round tube or else the, a 90 degree angle. You know, put the uh, corner piece of aluminum, like I say, uh, just a little something in there to get the air to turn from either side. That's the plan. Just to see, try to help it, see what all it does. I won't be able to compare that to something else that hasn't, you know, like a back-to-back -back comparison with a divider versus not having one, but I think it'll help. 
so that's that on the intakes and what I'm going to do is I need to get that on here this is the these are the ported heads yeah I know they look ugly but they work pretty decent uh, going on here I put some packed the inlet the EGR port with some steel wool and uh, try to keep some of the heat out of the intake this intake here that's going on it doesn't have it's got the external EGR so there's no heat going into the upper but heat blocking EGR port is helpful and these inlets here or in the uppers here actually have you know like I said the there's no port for it so it keeps the heat out this that EGR port goes from in here and then it comes out like I said up here to the uh, throttle body and that's where your EGR uh, spacers get the gets all the heat and then that gets transferred into the in the charge so to keep your in the charge cool you make more power so that's all I wanted to point out just to blab around for a few minutes hopefully it wasn't too boring It'll be a little bit informative but I will have a video from the dyno day and the track I'm sure Rod will have uh, track videos and uh and then I'll put up the charts and all that from when we do our dyno day in a, almost two months. So have a good one.